The voting is over and the results are mostly in. Whether you're happy or sad about the results, there are some things about North Carolina politics that you need to understand in order to really understand last night's results. Especially if you're new to the area or thinking about moving here, there are some big reasons politics are different in North Carolina than it is in other states. And we've really seen that difference show up in last night's election results. In today's video, I'll give you your quick primer on North Carolina politics. And at the end of that primer, I'll share the election results in a whole new light. Now, I'll admit, I'm not the most politically active person. I vote and I take my vote seriously. And of course, I have my own opinions, but I really do my best to keep my opinions out of my videos and out of my research because there's nothing like holding a tightly held belief that'll prevent you from seeing the truth in anything, whether it's economics, politics, religion. I often talk to people who believe the market must crash because X is in office or Y is in office and everything's going to heck in a handbasket. It's usually not that simple, which is why I try really hard to stay objective. Anyway, my purpose here is educational, not political. So if you think you can detect a bias here, let me know in the comments. Did I really ask for that? I did. Go for it. There are three things that you absolutely have to know about politics here in North Carolina. And the first one is that North Carolina really is purple. I've said this before in other videos, but today I'm going to show you how it applies uniquely to us here in North Carolina. But first, let's look at the similarities to other states. In North Carolina, just like you'll see throughout the country, voters tend to act differently in the cities than they do in the more rural parts of the state. This part of our politics is not unique to us. But if you dig a little deeper, you'll see that while there are similarities, there's a weird little twist in North Carolina because of our southern roots. Let's look at the election results from the last presidential election. Trump won the state with 49% of the vote to Biden's 48%. That's pretty close, but like national results, Biden carried counties with an urban demographic while Trump carried most of the more rural counties. Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, Charlotte, Wilmington, Asheville, and Boone were all solidly blue. It's worth noting, though, that while our cities do vote blue, with some exceptions, our cities aren't overwhelmingly blue, like California cities, for example. L.A. County had 70 to 80 percent blue voters in the last presidential election, while Wake County only had 50 to 60 percent. But also keep in mind that L.A. County has almost 10 million people, and Wake only has a million, so it's a big difference. Durham and Orange counties are the most left-leaning counties in the state. In fact, in the last 100 years, Durham County has only voted for a Republican president twice, once for Herbert Hoover in, in 1928 and then for Richard Nixon in 1972. And both of those elections were national landslides for the Republican candidate. But wait, you say, I've been watching politics for a long time and North Carolina almost always votes Republican and that makes it a red state. It's actually not that simple. It's true that since 1960, North Carolina has thrown its weight behind only four Democratic presidential candidates, Kennedy in 1960, Johnson in 60. Carter in 76, and Obama in 2008, but not in 12. That just seems like a few anomalies among a consistent voting pattern, right? But here's where it gets weird. In that same time period since 1960, North Carolina has only elected three Republican governors. Why would they be electing Republican presidents in the very same elections that they elected Democratic governors? Like, how many people actually do that? Go to the polling booth and vote one party in the presidential election and a totally different party in the state governor election. Apparently, North Carolinians do. Since 1960, North Carolina has elected three Republican governors and four Democratic presidents out of 15 elections. We have a very different definition of purple here in North Carolina. I was personally shocked in 2016 when we elected Trump to the presidency and Cooper, a Democrat, as governor. I don't think I truly understood the complexity of North Carolina politics until that point. And here is the next thing. Southern hospitality exists even in partisan politics. Take a look at this chart. Since 2011, the Republicans have had a pretty firm grip on the state legislature. If you look at the state map for the General Assembly seats, you see that the distribution of Republican and Democratic representatives align pretty closely with how the counties vote in the presidential elections. The more rural areas are much more likely to vote Republican, and since there are more rural areas, the GOP has developed a pretty stronghold on the state legislature. And this is where local politics can really impact national politics. Somebody could make a TV show out of this next story, and the story's not over yet. As a result of the 2020 census, because North Carolina has been gaining population relative to other states, in 2022, we get to send 14 congressmen and women to Washington instead of the 13 that we had been sending. That meant that the state legislature had to carve up the state into 
14 districts instead of 13. You see where this is going, right? The legislature are the ones who draw the district map and the Republicans control the legislature. Before the elections this week, Republicans controlled eight out of the 13 congressional districts and the Democrats had just five. So how the map was redrawn could favor one party over the other. The map that the Republicans drew up for this election was challenged by the Democrats who believed it unfairly favored Republicans. Back in February, the Democrat-controlled state Supreme Court in a four to three party line vote sided with the Democrats. The North Carolina Supreme Court blocked the state's new Republican-drawn congressional and legislative maps, ruling four to three that they violate the state's constitution with the justices who were registered Democrats making up the majority. The map went back to the drawing board. The redrawn map was also rejected by the court, which then appointed a committee to draw the map for the 2022 election. Not surprisingly, the new map drawn by the court-ordered committee favors Democrats who were looking to gain a few seats to Congress. This is to be expected. Each party is trying to win. Probably one of the things I find the funniest in political commentaries is when voters from the opposing side make it seem unethical that the other side is trying to win. Anyway, since the redistricting map only applies to this election, you can be sure that the whole map issue is not over yet, but that's not the real moral of the story. You would think that with all that map business, state Republicans and Democrats have it in for each other. And maybe they do, but the real story is that despite their differences, there is something deeper going on. There's a culture in North Carolina that supersedes political fervor, and this exists on both sides of the aisle. Listen to what Governor Cooper, a Democrat, had to say about the 2020 election. We had a tough election in 2020, Cooper said that day. They tried to get rid of me. I tried to get rid of them. We ended up the same way we were, and I think we looked at each other and said, this is what the people of North Carolina have voted for. We've got to work together to get positive outcomes for our state. I've told you all before that the editor, AKA Timothy, AKA my husband was a teacher for many years and taught quite a few children of many of these politicians of both parties. And we often heard elected officials in more off the record moments talk about how the political vitriol doesn't translate into their personal relationships with each other. Many of these politicians that you often see pitted against each other in news and public spaces, they're friends. It might surprise you, but they are. And this is one of the foundational reasons that both parties have been able to work together to build North Carolina into one of the rising stars of the 21st American century. When CNBC voted North Carolina the best state for business in 2022, they credited the bipartisan efforts of the state with creating the nation's best economy. When a Democratic governor, a Republican state Senate speaker, and a Republican House speaker can work together to bring companies like VinFast and Apple into North Carolina, Carolina, you've got something special. I don't want to paint some super rosy picture of political life in North Carolina where everyone holds hands and sings kumbaya around the campfire. Although I'm always game for a good campfire sing. But political disagreements can often spill over into the wider community and they're hurtful. And for the present, North Carolinians seem to be able to live with each other. And the last thing you need to know about North Carolina politics is it's civil, at least comparatively so. And we'll take what we can get. Maybe we could teach the federal government a thing or two. So back to this question of why does North Carolina tend to vote for Republican presidents and Democratic governors? This is really a big and complex question. I've read many articles from every political slant imaginable, and what's clear is there are way too many holes in the information online to come to any kind of definitive understanding. You get different answers depending on who you ask. Big surprise, right? Um, I haven't found any single answer that doesn't seem full of holes and objections, and it really may be a question that doesn't have a simple and clear answer. Yes, there is a lot of history involved, but the fact remains that today, many North Carolinians will split their ticket when voting. Look at this election map of the 2020 governor's race. Yes, the urban-rural divide is still there. It still looks very similar to how the counties voted in the presidential race, but there's a lot more pink on the governor's map. Counties that still voted Republican in the governor's race did so with less enthusiasm. The margins that existed in the Trump-Clinton race didn't hold true in the governor's race. To me, that says something important regardless of the story that might be told to explain it, what it tells me is that many in North Carolina really are looking at the person they're voting for, not just which letter is next to their name on the ballot. And I'll admit, I really like that. So what does last night's election say about North Carolina today? It reinforces what I've already said. First, that North Carolina is purple, Republicans gain ground in the Senate, and Democrats gain ground in the House. Secondly, civility is still intact. The Republicans gained control of the state Supreme Court, which means that 
that the map issue isn't over, but in those two state Supreme Court elections, we see again the civility of North Carolina politics. One Republican justice referred to his Democratic opponent as gracious, and that Democratic opponent called and congratulated Allen Tuesday night and told him, I hope he enjoys it as much as I did. The other Republican Supreme Court winner has said, in eight years as a Court of Appeals judge, I'm the only judge who's never written a dissent, and the reason is because I really believe in this idea of collaboration and consensus building. I have to say that I am proud to be a North Carolinian. There is something different here, and I really hope that those of you who choose to move to North Carolina can appreciate and support the old-fashioned political civility that still has a foothold here in the Tar Heel State. If you like this video, you might like this one about the things you really need to know about North Carolina before you move here.